Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. This tutorial will be a shorter, more condensed tutorial, but where we will not be looking at any design features embedded in WASP, but rather we are going to be specifically looking at a little technical feature uh, out of which many people have been asking. So I received a few requests. Uh, about asking how it's possible once I've generated a certain aggregation that I like to actually save this aggregation and store it for a later use. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be exactly looking into that and what we're going to be ex uh, precisely doing is we're going to be using the file from the last tutorial, from tutorial number 5. If you haven't, if you have that file you can just start from that, if you haven't followed along you can find uh, a file called work file in the downloads in the description box. So what we are going to do during this tutorial is we're going to want to get the aggregation that we have here and that we created running with WASP and we want to save it into a file in order to be able to then further in a second file, even in another file or in a later time, reload this aggregation into Grasshopper and uh, use it to build a novel aggregation starting from there. So where did WASP go? Yeah. So in order to do that, we are going to be using two components which are provided by WASP. And you can find them in the aggregation tab. And these two components are the load from file and the save to file. We're going to start by first of all saving our aggregation. And to do that, we are going to right click, go and get a save to file. And so when we want to save a file, we are not going to be saving the individual parts, but we're going to saving the we're going to be saving the whole aggregation object and the reason for that is that it stores some extra information. So if you want to, let's say we'll let's say I've been working a little bit with this aggregation and I've been changing it a few times and it reached a point in which I like it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my aggregation, connect it to the aggregation in the save component. Then we have to specify a path where we wanna save this file. To do that, we are gonna bring in a file path component. Right click on it and go to select a directory, which are gonna allow us to select a folder where to save this uh, file. And for now, I'm going to just choose my desktop, but you can navigate to any folder you have on your, you like on your computer and save there. And then I'm going to connect that to path. I have then to specify a name for this file. Oops. And I'm going to call this Maison Wasp and connect it to the name. And now, what this is doing, if you see here in the text file, is generating a text description of the whole aggregation. And what we want to do is we want to save this text description in a JSON file. A JSON file is fundamentally a dictionary file, so it's sort of a structured file, uh, similar to an XML file, but a bit lighter. If we want to save this aggregation, we just create a button. And whenever we press this button, this aggregation will be written to a file. Let's go on and do it. And now that I've done this, if I go to the desktop, oh, it's here, you see that I have created a Maison Wasp file. Just for you to know what this is, if I right click on this and open it with a text editor, yeah, it's, you're going to see this very long string of text, but if I format it with a JSON formatter, you see what this exactly is. So this file saves uh, our whole aggregation and particularly it's going to save a list of parts where each part is saved with the, their unique ID and then it's saving all the information so whether it has a parent, what's the type, what's the transformation that was applied to it, which connections on it are still active, which are the children and whether this part is a constrained part or not and you see that if you follow that's the case for all the parts and this is of course a very long file and here is all the information you might need for your um, for your aggregation okay now that we saved it let's see how we can bring it back let's move a bit lower and let's go and get uh, 
load from file component. Now, what I'm doing here right now is I'm doing it in the same exact file, but you could do it also in a separate file whenever you want. The uh, load part, compo load aggregation component has two inputs. One input is asking for the parts of uh, composing this aggregation. Uh, in order to save memory and not need to save all the geometry of the parts, uh, this uh, the saved file supposes that you know which part is composing this aggregation. Uh, I'm currently working on a save, save file that will also save the individual parts, but for now you have to have those parts in Grasshopper. We have them, of course, here. So in our file, we had our three parts here and we merged them into this. So what I can do is I can maybe copy them. So I'm going to create a data component, plug them here and bring them down to my parts here. I can maybe group them and call them and give them a name so that they know what it is. And then the second thing we have to specify is we have to specify the file that we want to load. And the file we want to load is the file that we just saved. Let's go on and create a file path component. Right click on it and go with select one existing file. And I'm going to navigate to the desktop and then look for it till I find my Maison Wasp file. And I click open. Now that I have it open, I can plug it into file. And what you see is that automatically here you get 357 parts which have been loaded. There is a little bug that I noticed today and it's that the IDs are not assigned. I'm gonna be fixing that soon. But for now you don't really need that ID. Now that we loaded these parts, let's go and check what we, what actually is. So let's go and get a uh, get part geometry component. And you see what we is. So we have an exact copy of our aggregation that we generated before. And interestingly, if now I go back here and I change this aggregation, you see that this aggregation stays the same because that has been saved in the file. Great. Let's now hide our whole aggregation here. And let's see how we can use this aggregation that we loaded. Let's say that we were working on a part of our design. And now what we want to do is we want to use this as a base and keep growing from there. How to do that? Well, how to do that? It's quite simple. All we want to do is we want to create a new aggregation. So we're going to go to aggregation, stochastic aggregation. We are going to specify our parts, which are the same parts that we use in the other aggregation. And then we are going to get the parts that we loaded from the load from file component and plug them in the prev input. So the prev input, we saw it before, is used to place any parts in the aggregation before starting it. And that's exactly what we can do here. We then have to specify a number of parts. And let's say again, as always, let's say 120 as a start. And then as a rules, we just have to go and get the output of our rule generator up here. Again, what we can do is we can get a data component to copy it down, connect that and bring it down. I'm going to create a group again and call it rules. And I'm going to connect my rules. And we're done. And as always, let's also create a button. If now we go and see what we have in the output as a part with get part sorry with get part geometry which you can find again in the parts tab we see what's happening we have the whole aggregation that we had before in place and then we are adding new parts to it if we would want to visualize just the new parts what we can do is we can get a split list component, get our parts out, and get a length component, a list length component, and now connect that to the output of our load parts. Connect it there and connect it to the input. And now we can see that in the part A, in the output A of this list, we have 
our parts and in the part B we have the new parts placed. Let's go on and hide everything else. And let's maybe assign two different colors with a custom preview. I'm gonna maybe give it a gray to this one. And I'm gonna maybe use a green for the new parts. I'm gonna hide whatever was before. Now we see that if I zero the number of parts, what I have as an output is exclusively the aggregation that I had saved. And as soon as I start growing, I grow new parts around it, but the, or the original aggregation that I loaded from before stays there. And also if I go and reset, the new parts change, but the existing parts remain. So you can see that this is a very simple but effective method to uh, save an aggregation whenever you're done working on it and then load it at a later stage and use it to um, to build a new aggregation out of it. What's interesting is that this process can be done several times. What you could also do is at this point, once I'm done here, I could, for example, just for you to see, I could plug this here now and I could save that. And if I would now reload the component, you see what happened. Now the aggregation that I had created is saved and it became the base I have. And now I can create 500 more and that's gonna be built on top. So you basically have available a pretty straightforward iterative saving mechanism that you can use uh, in the same way in which you would be saving a Rhino file or a Grasshopper file. And in this way, you can also work, and we're gonna see more of this in the coming tutorials. You can also work by creating uh, designs by constantly changing the rules and the parts that you make available. And then once you build this sequence once and for all, you can save it and then store it for any other use you might have for it. Great, so this was a quick tutorial and that's it for today, but I hope this allows you to work better in creating your aggregations and also in working with creating uh, larger scale and more complex aggregations while keeping control of them. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like, they want to keep updated with our new tutorials coming, please click the little wasp logo that will appear and subscribe and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.